In the shaker world, total harmonic distortion is a measurement of how well the shaker is recreating the signal from the controller. Sometimes you'll see that as THD plus N, which is total harmonic distortion plus noise, where we simply add the noise floor of the signal back into that calculation. Vibration Research has a THD calculation uh, that you can use to verify the operation of your shaker and how well it is represented or recreating that signal. Vibration Research is able to uh, demonstrate and calculate the THD from a sign sweep using the analyzer mode of the software. Uh, what we do is if you run a sign sweep we calculate the THD based on 10 harmonics of the fundamental frequency uh, at that uh, sweep. Uh, the Nyquist frequency does come into play here uh, so if you're running a sample rate of 60 kilohertz you won't be able to measure THD above 30 kilohertz or 50 percent of that sample rate. Typically uh, for most shaker systems you'll see something below 10 percent. Uh, the lower the value the better as uh, many systems are able to have a 1 percent uh, THD measurement uh, which means you're not adding additional excitation into your product. The general process of measuring THD of a system is to run a sign sweep between the operating range of the shaker itself. So for an ED system that may be from 5 Hz up to 4 kHz. Uh, the THD is going to be very high at the resonant points of the system and that's fully expected. The calculation uh, for THD requires the analyzer package. So once you have a test configured for your sign sweep, you go to the Analyzer tab and you can adjust uh, certain parameters for different results within that THD calculation. The first one being the FFT lines. Uh, a high number of FFT lines is going to give you a lower uh, frequency for calculated THD. So uh, the same holds true of sample rate. The sample rate affects how low we are able to calculate the THD in terms of frequency. Uh, so a very low sample rate or a low sample rate, maybe 20 kilohertz, will give you lower frequencies of uh, calculations for the THD. Unfortunately, you may run into problems at the higher frequencies trying to run a sweep with uh, a low sample rate. So I've already configured a sign sweep test to calculate THD. And if I go to my edit test, you can see what I've done. I'm running at uh, 0.1 inch or uh, 2.54 millimeters starting at 5 hertz up to uh, about 10 hertz which is that crossover frequency uh, for 0.5 G and then I'm running that up to a thousand hertz and I'll show you why I stopped at a thousand hertz for this test in just a moment. I'm going to look at the analyzer tab here as well. Uh, when I look at the analyzer tab you can see my FFT lines uh, are set to the maximum. Uh, 32,000. Uh, and then I also have to remember to set the swept THD. If I don't have that set at the beginning of the test, there's no way to go back and calculate that uh, from a data file. So you would have to actually rerun the test if you forget to select that. So, uh, and then I also have uh, on the parameters tab. Uh, I've lowered my sample rate. Normally it's set to auto and it's uh, set to about 65 kilohertz. Uh, but in this case I've dropped it down to 20 kilohertz. And the reason for that is uh, at the uh, uh, low frequency I wanted to be able to calculate uh, starting at 5 hertz. And the only way to do that was to lower the, the sample rate. Uh, and then the reason that I stopped at 1000 hertz in my actual profile was because above 1000 hertz I don't have good control at 20 kilohertz. So I'm ready to run my sign sweep and I'm going to hit the run button here and it takes a second to come up like every other test but you can see I have a different couple of plots up that are applicable to what I'm interested in. One is the THD so you can see if I click the edit graph settings I have uh, the THD selected for my graph type and I'm just looking at channel 1 which is my control channel. 
So it's giving me the frequency range that I'm operating at for this test, which is five to a thousand hertz. And the THD is a percentage of uh, that signal. Then I also have a second plot here, which is showing the actual waveform. Now you'll see uh, potentially at the resonant points that the waveform itself gets distorted uh, and the THD is going to calculate that and increase above where we're at now, which is uh, at about uh, maybe uh, two uh, or three percent. We also have the ability to calculate THD plus N, although that's not what we're currently plotting. You can see on my text window right here, I'm calculating THD plus N, uh, and that calculation is currently at 98%. So this sweep is gonna take some time, and if I click Edit Test, we can see exactly how long it's going to take. It's gonna take about seven minutes. We're gonna go ahead and let this run. You can see we're dropping below 1%. And I would say, uh, if you have a system with 1% uh, THD, uh, that's a very good system in terms of uh, distortion. It's also important to remember that the distortion that we're measuring is cumulative for the system as a whole. So it's not just the shaker, uh, but the amplifier and accelerometer are coming into play here as well. I believe the first resonant point of this system uh, is uh, going to be actually outside of our frequency range that we're operating at. Uh, and we'll look at that uh, in a bit as well. You can look at the waveform already and if I zoom way in at the peaks, you can see that this is actually the distortion that we're measuring. Uh, you can see in a perfect system, which would have a 0% distortion or total harmonic distortion, uh, this would be a perfectly smooth sine wave. Uh, since that's not the case, that's where we're getting that 1% uh, approximately for this system. We're at 100 hertz and still operating right at about 1%. Uh, again, uh, very good for this system. Uh, and certainly acceptable for uh, a shaker system. So anything above 10% uh, may be a, a fixture issue uh, or the product response is uh, feeding back into that control signal. I'm running this uh, with a head expander, a uh, bare table though, so I don't have any type of product or uh, uh, fixturing on this. If I were to remove the head expander and run this directly on the armature, I may get even better results. You could do some comparisons by uh, adding your fixturing and doing uh, another sweep and determining how well that fixture is designed and how well it's uh, transmitting those frequencies from the armature through the head expander and into the fixture and finally the product itself. So here I've uh, completed my sweep up to a thousand and I'm actually running out to 4,000 hertz now or four kilohertz. And I've increased my sample rate to 65 kilohertz. And you can hear that we just hit a resonance or mode of the head expander of the system. And again, if I zoom way in here, you can look at the actual waveform. Now I'm actually recording this waveform as well. So I have the system configured to record channel one during the test. Uh, and you could go back and uh, look at that uh, recording as well. Uh, but you have to actually run the sweep to calculate uh, THD. And again, it's important to note that if you forget to uh, turn on the swept THD under the analyzer tab, uh, you won't be able to go back and calculate that uh, after the fact. So uh, don't forget to select the swept THD.
and there you heard uh, another mode of the system. And you can see that in the THD calculation. This was that first one that we heard about 1700 hertz. Uh, and then again at, uh, I think it was about 3500 hertz. And you can see that it's uh, significantly higher than uh, the actual sweep itself. This video demonstrates another tool from Vibration Research that you can use to determine the health of your system by measuring the THD. You can do this in a preventative maintenance program uh, once a year even uh, and track changes over time. Uh, you can also use this to uh, compare different fixturing designs and product responses. You can get more information from Vibration Research uh, on our website www.vibrationresearch.com or contact us directly at 616-669-3028. <laughs> Perfect. I gotta go. <laughs>